So now let's move to um, our first speaker. He's Dan Gross, who became president of the Brady Campaign and Center to Prevent Gun Violence in February 2012. Dan was a close friend of Jim and Sarah Brady, who were role models for what passion, perseverance, sustained public engagement can accomplish. He is honored that they entrusted him to carry their work into the future. Dan is one of the foremost leaders in gun violence prevention movement and having co-founded and directed the Center to Prevent Youth Violence after his brother was severely wounded in a shooting at the Empire State Building in 1997. Under Dan's leadership, the Brady Campaign has announced the bold goal to cut the number of U.S. gun deaths in half by 2025 based on an innovative and exciting strategy that centers on the idea of keeping guns out of the wrong hands. Recently, Dan has served on Vice President Joe Biden's Gun Violence Prevention Task Force and has been featured at the Aspen Ideas Festival. He was also awarded the prestigious Next Generation Leadership Fellowship by the Rockefeller Foundation. The title of his topic is called The Human Toll, Gun Violence in America. Please welcome Dan Gross. Thank you, Susan, for that warm introduction, and good morning, AAP. I want to thank you for inviting me here today, and to all of you for joining this important discussion about the epidemic of gun violence in America and the energized movement that is happening right now across the country to make it stop. Your voices here and your partnership at the AAP are so important because for too long, people have viewed the issue of gun violence through a political lens. But as everyone in this room knows, that's wrong. 32,000 gun deaths in our nation every year. Simply put, gun violence is one of the most important public health issues facing our country today. I should begin by clarifying that the original invitation to speak here today was extended to Sarah Brady, Jim Brady's wife and my dear friend and a truly inspirational leader in our organization and in our movement. Very sadly, my dear friend Sarah passed away in April, but the kind folks at the AAP so graciously invited me to attempt to fill her shoes, which I know I could never really do, but in her indomitable spirit, I will try my best. I met Jim and Sarah Brady after my own firsthand experience with gun violence. My brother was shot in the head during a mass shooting on the observation deck of the Empire State Building in February of 1997. I left my career in advertising to dedicate my life to this issue. I know what families of gun violence endure. In addition to my own experience, I talk with families and victims of gun violence every single day, and there are more every single day. We all hear so much about the terrible mass shootings as each new school or town becomes the latest sad addition to our national lexicon around gun violence from Sand Hook to Charleston to recently Umpqua Community College in Oregon. But every day, 89 people in America die from gunshots, seven children and teens. When I talk with these families, they all want the same thing, sensible solutions to gun deaths and gun violence in America. And that's where Brady comes in. Our mission is to cut gun deaths in half by 2025. It's a bold mission, but make no mistake, it's achievable. And here's the thing that the gun lobby doesn't want you or the American public to know. 
We can do it just by keeping guns out of the hands of the people that we all agree shouldn't have them, like violent felons, domestic abusers, and of course, children. And at Brady, we focus on three big opportunities to do that, to keep guns out of the wrong hands. Number one, we are going to finish the job the Brady Law started and expand effective, life-saving Brady background checks to all gun sales, including gun shows and online, where thousands of guns are sold without background checks in our nation every single day. Number two, we're gonna stop what we call bad apple gun dealers, the small number of gun dealers that sell virtually every single crime gun in our country, and they're doing it recklessly and negligently. They know what they're doing. They must be stopped because those guns are devastating communities across the country. And number three, and the most relevant to this conversation today, public health and safety campaigns to keep guns out of the hands of children, and beat back the gun lobby myth that a gun in the home makes you safer. Now I know that as pediatricians who've devoted your lives to the health and safety of children, most of you here are already committed to these solutions and you're already making such an important difference. But in recent years, the chances are also that many of you felt a little bit frustrated, especially with our lawmakers. And believe me, having dedicated almost two decades of my life to this issue, there have been, to there have been times that I've been there myself, watching as our nation endures massacre after massacre, asking ourselves the same old questions. What is it going to take to get something done? How many more children have to die in a school shooting? How many more places from malls to movie theaters to churches have to be turned into graphic testimony to a new normal in our country? How many more people have to die than the 89 that are killed with bullets in our nation every day? We've repeatedly asked these questions only to see lawmakers here in Washington sit on their hands or in other states like Florida, worse. But folks, I am so pleased to be able to stand here today and say, that we no longer have to ask ourselves those same old questions because we have our answer. We have crossed a threshold, real changes in the air, and the tipping point for our issue has finally arrived. <laughs> Think about every great social movement. There's a moment when we look back and say, that, that's when things really started to turn. And I'm here today to say that for the epidemic of gun violence in America, that moment is here. And it is here because finally the American public, not only victims and advocates, but everyone is finally coming together based on our common goals and our common values to say enough. Enough of the mass shootings, enough of 89 people dying every day, and enough of a small group of craven politicians putting the interests of a corporate lobby ahead of our health and safety. We are better than this. And that's what's happening, finally, on the gun issue. Sure, some of the voices saying enough are coming from the places they always have, from advocacy organizations and victims like me. But what makes this moment different, what makes it a tipping point is that our voices and the voices in this room are being echoed and amplified by the broader American public. And it's all manifesting itself in real progress and real change that only recently would have been considered unthinkable. And let me take a moment to give you a few examples. First, Let's start where most conversations in our country seems to start, with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm only partially joking. <laughs> Think about issues from smoking to drunk driving to the success of same-sex marriage. All those conversations really started to change when they started to transcend politics and advocacy and take on a life of their own in popular culture. And that is exactly what's happening right now on gun violence. In just the past few weeks, we've seen TV shows like Blackish and Saturday Night Live make powerful points through comedy 
celebrities and real cultural influencers are speaking out everywhere. Howard Stern talked about his supportive background checks to his millions of listeners. I may know that because I'm a listener or maybe I'm not. Perez Hilton has been writing about it regularly. And yes, Kim Kardashian made a passionate, unsolicited appeal for background checks to her more than 35 million Twitter followers. Brady's rallying the Hollywood community around its hashtag enough campaign and working to integrate more powerful storylines into more TV shows about subjects like the dangers to kids of guns in the home. And the energy and enthusiasm around these efforts is tremendously exciting. Now let's look at what so far has been another form of entertainment so far, the 2016 presidential race. Gun violence has emerged as a serious central issue. And we need to appreciate how significant that is. Think about it. Guns have almost been the classic third rail issue in our country. And now major presidential candidates are actually running on it. Hillary Clinton and Martin O'Malley have basically made Brady's platform, which aligns with the AAP's platform, centerpieces of their campaigns. In the Democratic, yes. In the Democratic debate, CNN devoted the first issue question to gun violence, calling it one of the toughest challenges facing our nation. That was unthinkable four years ago. And candidates were literally Talk about unthinkable, falling over each other to demonstrate the strength of their stance for sensible gun laws. They're actually bragging about their negative NRA ratings. <laughs> and I know where that applause is coming from because for those of us who have been working on this issue for years, it's almost surreal to watch. On the other end, the media is also calling out candidates more and more for outrageous, out of touch, out of step statements and positions. Comments like Jeb Bush's stuff happens after the terrible shooting in Oregon, they're no longer simply just brushed off. Those same old tired gun lobby talking points are no longer taken at face value by the media or the public. Tell me how background checks or gun responsibility conflicts with your belief in the Second Amendment or with the views of your rural constituents or with the rights of anyone who's already not allowed to own a gun. Tell me. And the tough questions aren't just limited to Republicans, because sorry, Brady is not an arm of the Democratic Party. We are a one-issue organization, and it's an issue that is killing 89 Americans and seven children and teens every single day. We forced Bernie Sanders to explain and ultimately backtrack on some very bad votes that he very confidently defended until recently. Suddenly, this has become an issue that the candidates on the wrong side aren't so excited to talk about anymore. And the ones on our side are. And at the center of these efforts has been Brady, its supporters, all of you, getting our national debate questions asked, supporting candidates for doing the right thing and bashing those that don't. And we only plan to continue to turn up that heat until we get to the 2016 election. Then, let's look at what's always been our greatest hope, our overwhelming public support. And as impossible as it might seem, that support only continues to increase. Now, an astounding 93% of the American public supports expanding Brady background checks on all gun sales. This includes 90% of Republican voters, more than 80% of gun owners, and 74% of NRA members. Did you catch that, Paul Ryan? 90% of Rep Republican voters. But really, our problem has never been popular support. It has been the disgraceful disconnect between the American public and the politicians we have elected to serve us. And once again, I am pleased to report that that disconnect is closing every single day and the pressure is mounting. And it's not just manifesting itself in real momentum, but in real change. Since the unthinkable tragedy at Sandy Hook and the failure of Congress to expand Brady background checks to all gun sales, we have taken the fight to the states and we are winning. In fact, 
since Sandy Hook, six states, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, New York, Oregon, and Washington, have expanded Brady background checks to all gun sales. We're We're already on the ballot next year in Nevada for a citizen's initiative, and now we're all in supporting the citizens of Maine to get the 61,123 signatures, but who's counting, necessary to get it on the ballot there in 2016. And these ballot initiatives, where citizens can vote directly on a new law, citizens vote directly, illuminate a true path forward, because it turns out it's a lot easier for the gun lobby to bully a small number of politicians than it is for them to bully millions of voters. We are going to win in Maine and in Nevada. And after we do, there are 14 more states that have the ballot initiative process that don't have expanded background checks. And we plan to continue our march across this country, making this nation safer, state by state, if that's what it takes, until Congress, almost always the last to get it, wakes up and gets a message from the American public that they can no longer ignore. As I've said, the bottom line is that stopping gun deaths starts by keeping guns out of the wrong hands. And that, of course, includes children. Guns are the second leading cause of death among children and teens in our nation. More than 17,000 American children and teens are injured or killed with bullets each year. 48 young people are shot every single day. Seven are killed. And so many of these tragedies, thousands every year, are with guns parents bring into the home, certainly not with bad intentions, but absolutely with bad information about the risks. One in three homes with kids in the US have guns. Nearly 1.7 million children live in homes with an unlocked and loaded gun. And so much of this is the result of the lies the corporate gun lobby has been feeding the American people all so they can do the only thing that they really care about, which is to sell more guns to more people without any concern about the carnage that those guns are causing. And I want to show you the real impact of all those lies. I was, um, I was speaking the other day with a group of supporters and was struggling to find a word for the lies the gun lobby tells us that was appropriately descriptive but not profane. Someone suggested feculent. <laughs> I thought it might be an appropriate workaround for such a well-educated group of physicians such as this. So anyway, here's the real impact of all the gun lobby feculence. Here's the percentage of the American people who 10 years ago thought that a gun made a home safer. 42%. Now, here's that percentage today. That's right. Thanks to the marketing efforts of the gun lobby and the irrational fear and paranoia they make it their goal to create, 63% of the American public now believes a gun makes their family safer. And every day across the country, children are being killed and injured by these guns. Nine children are shot in our country unintentionally every single day almost all with a parent's gun. More than 800 children and teens take their own lives every year, the overwhelming majority with a parent's gun. This is even the case with school shootings. In fact, in more than two-thirds of school shootings, the gun came from the home of the attacker or a friend or a relative. It was obviously the case in the terrible tragedy at Sandy Hook. That's right. When it comes to school shootings, the first line of defense is parents having responsible and safer attitudes about the dangers of guns in the home. Every day, it seems we hear children who are shot or killed because of a gun a parent brought into the home for protection. These parents are not bad people. They just made a really bad decision based on really bad information put into their heads by the corporate gun lobby so they can sell more guns without any concern what those guns do. Feculence. And once again, it is time we say enough. And doing that, replacing the feculence with pure and sterile information to keep our kids safe, 
requires having an honest conversation in our country about the dangers of guns in the home. And there is no better group to lead that conversation and no group that has been doing more to lead it than the American Academy of Pediatrics. We are so proud of our decade plus collaboration with the AAP around the Ask campaign. Because of our efforts together, tens of millions of parents have started to ask if there are guns in the homes where their kids play. And you know what? Since we launched that campaign, campaign together in 2000, according to the CDC, 900 fewer children and teens are killed with guns each year. And the number of unintentional shootings has dropped by 42%. There's absolutely no doubt that people are alive today because of our work together around the Ask campaign. But obviously, yes. But obviously, we still have a lot of work to do. You're all still well too aware of the lengths to which the gun lobby is willing to go to suppress and stifle this conversation about the dangers of kids and guns. And first and foremost, I want you to know that the Brady campaign has been proud to stand with you in your fight in Florida to keep the gun lobby out of your exam rooms. We've been helping to lead the battle in the courts and to shine an appropriate public spotlight on this utterly abhorrent situation. And we are committed with every fiber of our being to continue doing whatever it takes because you don't need to do more than read the news to be reminded every day that this is literally a matter of life and death for America's children. You know, recently I was flying cross country to talk to a large group like this and the woman sitting, not, but not as awesome a group as this, and the, the woman sitting next to me happened to be binge watching one of my favorite TV shows, Mad Men. And as I was trying to think about how I would end my remarks, I would glance over at her screen every now and then. And it seemed every time I looked, I saw someone smoking in an office or around children or even while pregnant or littering or ignoring suffocation hazards or driving without seatbelts or driving drunk. And eventually, it, sometimes it takes me time, it dawned on me that of all things, the show Mad Men actually provides tremendous inspiration for all of us committed to preventing gun deaths and injuries. I mean, look at how much the world has changed on those things in a relatively short time. How dangerous behaviors that were commonplace, even glamorous, have become stigmatized in just a generation or two once they became real conversations about health and safety. That is the power of the Ask campaign. And that is the importance of your leadership as pediatricians. So thank you for all that you have done and continue to do to keep families safe, to help lead the conversations that are pushing this issue finally over the tipping point and toward a future where maybe someday some period TV show will depict the epidemic of gun violence and future generations of children will only be able to imagine how terrible it must have been. Thank you.